Welcome to Module 12 of the Six Sigma Institute's Lean Six Sigma Certification Curriculum, which follows both the Council for Six Sigma Certification and the International Association for Six Sigma Certification Bodies of Knowledge. A full copy of the Council for Six Sigma Certification's Book of Knowledge can be downloaded from the course description section for free. In this module, we will be discussing the defined phase of the DMAC methodology. This module will take approximately 40 minutes to complete. At the end of this module, there will be a five question quiz on the topics discussed, which you can complete on your own time at any time. You will also find several Six Sigma tools that you can download, including a project charter template and a stakeholder analysis or RACI template, both of which are Excel files. A project charter or team charter is a short document that includes information about the team and what they plan to accomplish. In this section, we will be discussing the process of creating a project charter. The purpose of the charter is to set expectations that can be agreed upon by the team as well as the sponsor or executive leaders. Keep the team focused on the goal, ensure the project remains aligned with the goals of the business, and documents the fact that control of a process is being moved from a business executive or manager to a Six Sigma team project. Businesses that are implementing Six Sigma organization-wide might consider creating or using a specific template for their team charters. Templates streamline the define phase and make it easier for leadership teams and other employees to understand critical process components at a glance. While Final team documentation is likely to be extremely extensive, and even in the defined phase, teams themselves might work with lengthy requirements and documents. Charters themselves should be as concise as possible. Some organizations will distill charters into a single page, while others use a multi page document. There are several important elements that should be included in a team charter. There is the business case which is the financial drivers of the project. The scope limits the parameters for the project and the stakeholders define who will benefit from the project. The team members are the people who will get it done while the milestones set the timelines and expectations. We will discuss these individual elements in greater detail over the next few slides. The business case might also be referred to as the financial drivers behind a project. Related closely to the problem statement, the business case is a short statement that provides a reason the project should be undertaken. The problem statement tells someone where, when, and how. The business case says why it's important. Previously, we talked about how dollar amounts or other financial metrics were important to include in the problem statement. If you include a business case in your charter, you would build on that basic financial statement to explain why, specifically, the loss of money, efficiency, or quality is important to consumers, employees, or the organization. You might also make an argument for why the problem must be solved now. In essence, why is this project being run now in place of another project? We talked about the concept of scope previously. For the purposes of the team charter, the scope should include a hard beginning and end of the process or problem being considered. You might also want to include a short list of items or activities that are in scope and out of scope for your project. A SIPOC diagram helps teams identify the parameters for a project. And you can also use the in and out box method to understand the intended scope of the project. The scope should be clear. Listing the scope for a project of or process as beginning at the order stage and ending with fulfillment isn't clear because different people might consider different points the beginning of the order stage or the end of fulfillment. A better scope statement might be beginning when a customer places an order and ending when the order is boxed for shipment. Going even further, 
a team might deem return and replacement processes out of scope for a project so that they are only dealing with original orders. Successful projects have a well-defined scope that is approved and backed by a project sponsor or champion. Listing major stakeholders on the charter helps the team remember who and what they are likely to impact in addition to end customers. Having the list visible during meetings reduces the chances that the team will initiate changes that might have a negative or unwanted effect on other process owners or processes. And it helps to direct the team to resources outside of the team that can provide help, access, or information to areas related to the project. We discussed team members and roles previously, and the team charter simply needs to list the names of all the team members along with their role and expected time commitment. Adding time commitments to the charter helps sponsors and executive leadership understand the human resource requirements for the project. Often, a Six Sigma team leader has to seek approval for staff members from other areas to devote a specific amount of time to the project. Time commitments can be listed in hours per week, but are often listed as a percentage of the employee's overall time. For example, a subject matter expert who is expected to attend all of the meetings to provide input, but is not expected to complete data analysis, collection, or improvement work, might be listed as providing 10% of his or her time to the team. A list of team members in a charter might look something like what is listed here. You don't have to list all of the staff members you might possibly consult during the course of the project, though. Previously. We covered creating a draft schedule for a Six Sigma project. A Gantt chart is the most commonly used tool for scheduling. It is a bar chart that displays the phases of a project according to time. One of the benefits of using a Gantt chart to display a rough schedule for the project is that it can be easily included in a one-page project charter. Anyone reviewing the charter can quickly visualize the time element required for the project. Teams should ensure a date is provided for the end of each of the DMAC phases and that all team members agree that the dates are plausible given what the group wants to do. In some cases, milestones might be set by the project sponsor or champion, but the team should also agree that milestone dates are possible. If dates seem implausible, teams can present a counter schedule with logical arguments regarding why the original schedule would not work. In addition to milestones at the end of each project phase, Six Sigma teams might also want to set milestones for work within each phase, specifically for the more laborious, measure, analyze, and improve phases. Everyone needs to know how the team is going to measure success. If a sponsor is measuring success, on customer satisfaction scores, and the team is measuring success on internal quality scores, ideas about the outcome of the project are likely to defer. Usually, measures of success can be pulled from the critical to quality metrics we discussed previously. If teams can convert critical to quality to a measurement, they can understand what major metrics determine success of a project. While teams might begin to gather measurements, or look at existing measurements in the defined phase. Finalization of metrics can extend into the measure phase. Financial information is already likely included on the charter in both the business case and the problem statement. Teams might include expected financial benefits in the business case section of a charter, but it must be included somewhere. For some sponsors and executive leaders, the financial benefit is the most important piece of information included in a charter. An estimated savings or increase in revenue is also provides a measuring stake by which leaders can consider requests for resources for a project. A Six Sigma expert should never overextend estimates regarding financial benefits. It's almost always better to underpromise and overperform. If you tell leaders a project will save $500,000 in the first year because a big number means 
you are more likely to get project approval and all the resources you ask for, you're the one that answers when the project saves only 80,000. As with any aspect of a Six Sigma project, be as accurate as possible, but be conservative with estimates when accuracy is in question. Before a Six Sigma team presents a charter for approval, it should take time to review the document as a group to ensure the charter lays a foundation for success. The team may want to ask if everything, especially the goals, financial expectations, and timeline is realistic. They should ensure that everyone on the team can devote to the committed amount of time to the project and whether the project backed by a sponsor or champion with enough influence to drive critical assistance and resources. The team should know if it expects to be supported by auxiliary departments, such as information technology, human resources, compliance, accounting, or legal, and whether it has the necessary freedom to implement a solution it designs after the solution is approved. More importantly, the team should know whether it has a leader who is well-versed in Six Sigma tools and project management. If the answer to any of these questions is no, then the team could be setting itself up for failure. Before moving forward with any work, even defining a team charter, it is a good idea for a Six Sigma team to establish some basic rules and requirements for the team. We touched briefly on this when we discussed the management of a team. The ground rules for a project should be maintained in writing and approved by all team members, but they don't have to be part of an official charter document. The reason for documenting the rules and having all the members approve them is because a single team member cannot later claim to be ignorant of the rules. At the same time, rule generation on a Six Sigma team shouldn't be a completely democratic process. Some of the more common sense or critical rules can be provided by the black belt or team leader. The team itself will likely vote on the frequency of meetings and when meetings should be scheduled. Seeking team member input ensures that all team members can actually commit to the meeting time slots. By the time the defined phase is complete, the team should have identified and defined the scope, goals, and expectations of the project. In this section, we are going to discuss everything that should be included in your defined full gate checklist. This list includes all of the mandatory steps to ensuring that you have completed the phase, such as the creation of a comprehensive project statement, the development of a team charter, and understanding of the process being improved, as well as of the voice of the customer, and a definition of what the success will look like. In order to create a strong problem statement, there are some basic pieces of information that we will need to include within the statement itself. We need to declare where and when the problem was recorded or was occurring, what the measurement of the magnitude for the problem was, preferably with some tie to cost, and a brief description of the problem that could be understood by professionals not closely aligned with the process. Try to avoid too many niche words and acronyms if you will be presenting information to non-niche professionals. You should also include a brief notation about the metric used to measure or describe the problem. A project charter or team charter is a short document that includes information about the team and what they plan to accomplish. The purpose of the charter is to set expectations that can be agreed upon by the team as well as the sponsor or executive leaders. Keep the team focused on the goal, ensure the project remains aligned with the goals of the business, and documents the fact that control of a process is being moved from a business executive or manager to a Six Sigma project team. A thorough understanding of the process starts with the creation of a SIPOC diagram to define the suppliers, inputs, process, outputs, and customers. From there, we need a value stream map to visually show how inputs move from the suppliers through the process and on to the customer, as these two will define the boundaries of the process and identify the resources needed 
in order to complete the project. In order to understand the voice of the customer, you need to understand what the actual needs of the customer are. And this should be based on data collected from the customer, not just assumptions made by management. There is a need to focus on the critical to quality factors while simultaneously staying within the project scope and budget. We must define what success will look like, but this definition should be based on the critical to quality data. It should be measurable. It should be a metric that can be compared both before and after project completion. The team and the project sponsor need to agree on what will define success for the project, and everything should be documented. If additional milestones are needed in the process, we should add them as well.